Good evening, everyone. My name is Heath Haskins, Code Primate, and as you can tell, my voice sounds so much better today. I'm actually feeling much better than I was yesterday. Um, didn't record yesterday. Didn't have anything to do yesterday, and I just rested, took meds. I'm feeling great. So let's get back into the game. It was uh, Stanley Parable, and from last time it said, yay, pick your favorite time. Well, I am absolutely going to pick... Um, what is my favorite time? I would have to say uh, 4 o'clock p.m. That is my favorite time. <coughs> Your favorite time of the day. Yes, it is. Or could it simply be you couldn't resist the current time? It's not the current time. After all, I know how much you enjoy setting the time correctly. Okay, now I'm curious how accurate 4 o'clock is. Let's use another slider to find out. How accurate is 4 p.m.? Uh, it's okay. So it's pretty inaccurate. You know, can, uh, can I just say, regardless of the accuracy of the clock, I'm having a great time adjusting these settings. I feel like uh, I'm learning more about you. How could and about you and how you like things to be set? It's good to collect data. I wish I had more sliders, but we've gone through all the sliders I have. Hmm, perhaps I can invent some new sliders and gather new data on you. Uh, shouldn't be too hard. Yeah, let me whip up a couple of new ones. Should be ready for you next time that you boot up the game. I am, I am loving that. That is so awesome. Okay, so here we are, the Stanley Parable. It is the Ultimate Deluxe version. I have already chosen that I've never played the game before, so it's taken me through all the first ones. Um, I guess there are a ton of different endings. Uh, we did the one. What did what did we do? We did the. <coughs> did we select the no? Oh gosh, I gotta pause. This it. is the story of a man named Stanley. We can can we skip this part? This Stanley the worked thing? for a company in a big building I where he was employee number four two seven. Employee number four two seven's job. Does it change? Simple. At he all? sat at his desk in room 427, and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. I this is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. Okay, I don't think it's any different. considered it soul-renting, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came <sighs> in, as though he had been made exactly this job and Stanley was happy technically speaking from like an outside perspective and then one Stanley day, is a character inside peculiar. a video game he was created for something that, that job. would forever change Stanley just saying. something he would never Thinking quite forget outside the box you know he had been at his desk for nearly an, an hour, hour when he realized that not no one orders. single order had arrived on the monitor for him to dusty. follow no one had showed up to give him instructions nothing looks changed Nothing looks different. Hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Should I look up Shocked, the... frozen solid, Stanley found hmm. himself unable to move for the longest time. That desk is But as he came warm. to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. And that's an old CRT monitor. Like, I just realized how aged this game is I mean how old is it it's like 2016 or something like that so can I click anything on the buttons Okay, there's nothing I can click through there. So, all right, I'm gonna pause it for just a second because I need to look and see what we did last time. We I'm not sure <laughs> okay, that, but in his eagerness to prove that he is in control of the storm. <laughs> okay, so last time we left off, there. <laughs> wow. Okay, so I finished the game properly with like the turning off the the mind control system, but there was another option. There was a no. Or all of his like, co-workers were gone. What could it mean? So I'm just. Stanley gonna, decided to go to the meeting room. I'm gonna rush Perhaps through if I remember. I remember how to get through. We're just gonna rush through it. When Stanley came to a set of two open left, doors, right? he entered the door on his left. Door on the left. Okay. 
And then we have to head up the stairs to the boss's office. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find coming to a staircase. Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. All right. Because the boss knows that what the boss says goes. If the bosses suffered losses, then that's what the boss chose. Time Magazine, extra bathrooms. Okay, so this is the executive washroom. Does that say poison? Mr. Yuck says no. I don't know what that is. Okay, let's go this way. We're gonna travel in here. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk okay. guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. Two, four. Two, eight. Four, five. Two, eight, but four, of course, five. Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. Go. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. All right, and then there's an elevator. It goes down. There's also an escape route, so I think I'll, I'll do that one as well. I think those are the long, like, it's a really long path to get to. Descending deeper this into area. the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question what? would not go unanswered for long. Why does this game slightly make me nervous? Well, Stanley walked straight ahead through the large there door that read Escape. Mind Control Escape. Facility. Escape! Alright. Is there like a shift to run? There is not. The lights rose on. on an enormous room packed with television screens. Come on. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? There we go. Shift to run. Shift to run. Con control to... Oh, I can duck. I didn't know ducking was a possibility. Camera. Please. Now the monitors jumped to life. Their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building. Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and standing. Can we tell where four two seven? Eternally monitored in this place, where freedom meant nothing. Four four twenty seven. Four. Is that one me? Four twenty seven. Look right there. <gasps> that is me. That's Stanley. That's Stanley's office. It's me, guys. Stanley. Oh, I miss Stanley. He's a brilliant man. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. It Had is. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this totally. time? Was this the only reason he was fire, happy with his fire. boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? For a company to only have, like, it has at least 500 no. employees, right? He refused to believe it. He and couldn't only two of them accept were fired? It. His own life Good in someone else's control? Never! The narrator is louder than me. Wasn't it? Why is the was narrator so loud? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? Utterly blind to the world. But here was okay. the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad okay. or content, One, walking, eating, two. working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality two. of his past began to sink in, two, Stanley three. decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. Yeah, For well. he would dismantle the controls three. once and for all. Where's four? Anybody see a four? 
Oh, is that the four up there? How do I get up there for the four? This is like blocked off, isn't it? Jump. Jump, Stanley. Jump. We don't, can't get back there. Can we like glitch through this? And you know what? This isn't what we're doing. We're, we're going to go turn the machine on. <laughs> Instead of the off button, we're going to turn it on this time. Mind control. Idle. Awaiting input. I'm going to be evil. <laughs> and when at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. On. Oh, Stanley. You didn't just activate the controls, did you? How <laughs> do they kept you enslaved all these years? You go and you try to take control of the machine for yourself. Is that what you wanted? Control? Yes. Yes. Stanley, control. I applaud your effort, I really do. But you need to understand, there's only so much that machine can do. You were supposed to let it go, turn the controls off, and leave. If you want to throw my story off track, you're going to have to do much better than that. I'm afraid you don't have nearly the power you think you do. For example, and I believe you'll find this pertinent, Stanley suddenly realized he had just initiated the network's emergency detonation system. In the event that this machine is activated without proper DNA identification, nuclear detonators are set to explode, eliminating the entire complex. How long until detonation then? Hmm, let's say, um, two minutes. Ah, now this is making things a little more fun, isn't it, Stanley? It's your time to shine. You are the star. It's your story now. Shape it to your heart's desires. Oh, this is much better than what I had in mind. What a shame we have so little time left to enjoy it. Should Here I run? moments until the bomb goes off. But what precious moments each one of them is. More time to talk <laughs> about you, about me, where we're going, what all this means. I barely know where to Charge. start. Charge. Okay. What's that? You'd like to know where your co-workers are. A moment of solace before you're obliterated. All right, I'm in a good mood. You're going to die anyway. I'll tell you exactly what happened to them. I erased them. I turned off the machine. I set you free. Of course, that was merely in this instance of the story. Sometimes when I tell it, I simply let you sit there in your office forever, pushing buttons endlessly and then dying alone. Other times, I let the office sink into the ground, swallowing everyone inside, or I let it burn to a crisp. I have to say this, though. This version of events has been rather amusing. Watching you try to make sense of everything and take back the control wrested away from you gets quite rich. I almost hate to see it go. But I'm sure whatever I come up with on the next go-around will be even better. My goodness, only 34 seconds left. But I'm enjoying this so much. You have three attempts. You know what? To hell with it. I'm going to put some extra time on the clock. Why not? These are precious additional seconds. Time doesn't grow on trees. Console disabled backup power to activate. Oh dear me, what's the matter, Stanley? Is it that you have no idea where you're going or what you're supposed to be doing right now? I have no clue. Or did you just assume when you saw that timer that something in this room was capable of turning it off? I mean, look at you. <laughs> running from button to button, screen to screen, clicking on every little thing in this room. These numbered buttons. No, these colored ones. Or maybe this big red button. Or this door. Everything, anything. Something door. here will save me. Why would you think that, Stanley? That this video Yellow. game can be beaten? Orange. One solved? Do you have any idea what your purpose in this place is? <laughs> Orange. <laughs> Stanley. Orange. You're in for quite a disappointment. Orange. But here's a spoiler for you. Okay. That timer isn't a catalyst to keep the action moving along. It's just seconds ticking away to your death. You're only still playing instead of watching a cutscene because I want to watch you for every moment that you're powerless. <laughs> to see you made humble. This is not a challenge. It's a tragedy. Oh, you wanted to control this world, that's fine. Access. But I'm going to destroy it first. So you Good boy. Good boy, employee. Take a look at the clock, Stanley. That's 30 seconds you have left to struggle. 
30 seconds until a big boom and then nothing. No ending here. Just you being blown to pieces. Goodbye, employee. Two, two, seven, four, two, seven. Peacefully? Another choice. Make it count. Or don't. It's all the same to me. All a part oh, of the And believe me, I will be laughing at every second of your inevitable life from the moment we fade in until the moment I say, happily ever up. <laughs> <laughs> the end is never the end. Now loading. Wow. <coughs> okay, so that's ending number uh, three. The nuke. <laughs> All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Okay. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. I should. I should. No matter how down. hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. So, one, we did correct ending, end game the right way, two, jumped off conveyor, three, initiated the nuke, <laughs> pressed on instead of off. Okay, so, I got three of them down. Let's see, uh... If I go to the meeting room or whatnot, what all can I do? Waiting input. Oh, I did something. Ah, okay. Surname access. Okay, I just deleted his uh, files or her files. I hate Mondays. Can't open any of this stuff. Four sixteen, four fifteen. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and go left. Yet, there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. I'm wondering if there's any kind of codes on, like, the slide, maybe? Also, I just realized I'm not casting a shadow. Like, I have no shadow. Everyone is unique. <laughs> you, most of all. Slides, charts, charts and slides. Number of slides on the slide. <coughs> wow. Green, yellow, red, blue. 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 Okay. Green, yellow, red, blue. Oh, hello. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Why do I feel like there was there's... nothing here? No choice to make, no path to follow, just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. Is it going to annoy him if I stay here? It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. <laughs> are you are you really still in the broom closet? Standing around doing nothing? Yeah. Why? Please offer me some explanation here. I'm I'm genuinely confused. It's progressing the story. 
The narrator is speaking to me. You do realize there's no choice or anything in here, right? If I'd said Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. But it didn't even occur to me because literally this closet <sighs> is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. I never would have thought to mention it. <laughs> There's interesting stuff. There's like cardboard. Maybe to you this is somehow its own branching path. Maybe when you go talk about this with your friends, you'll say, Ow! Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? The broom closet ending was my favorite. I hope your friends find this concerning. <laughs> what do you think? Is it is it concerning? Comment down below. Stanley was fat and ugly and really, really stupid. <laughs> he probably only got the job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. That all with drug money. Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. <laughs> Wow, narrator just straight up well, got I've savage. Well, I've come to a very definite conclusion about what's going on right now. You're dead. You got to this broom closet, explored it a bit, and were just about to leave because there's nothing here when a physical malady of some sort shut down your central nervous system and you collapsed on the keyboard. <laughs> well, in a situation like this, the responsible thing is to alert someone nearby so as to ensure that your body is taken care of before it begins to decompose. <laughs> Hello? Anyone who happens to be nearby? The person at this computer is dead. They have fallen prey to any number of your countless human physiological vulnerabilities. <laughs> it's indicative of the long-term sustainability of your species. Please remove their corpse from the area and instruct another human to take their place, making sure they understand basic first-person video game mechanics and filling them in on the history of narrative tropes in video gaming, so that the irony and insightful commentary of this game is not lost on them. <laughs> All right, when you've done that, just step out into the hallway. <laughs> I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. It's got to be an ending. I didn't, I didn't get any kind of achievement yet. Is there some kind of achievement? Is there anything? I just walked over something. Hold on. What was that? really annoying is there really no more did I did I do all there was hold on okay so apparently it is an ending but not like ah second player it's good to have you on board I guarantee you can't do any worse than the person who came before you <laughs> You too? Unbelievable. I'm at the mercy of an entire species of invalids. Perhaps there's a monkey nearby you can hand the controls to. A fish? Fungus? Look, you can hammer out the details. I'm not particularly picky. I'll just be waiting for when you're ready to pick up the story again. <laughs> no, I think that's it. I think that's the end of this. All right, if Stanley goes back into the broom closet after the game resets, the narrator will get even more frustrated and give up completely, remaining silent no matter how long the player stays in the closet. Okay, so, I think that's it. That's, that's it for that ending. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. No, we didn't. We walked downstairs. What does that say? I can't read it. My eyes are too bad, or my monitor is too bad. I got some cables and stuff. Firehouse.
But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished? His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all? None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. Did, I may as well enjoy this. Did you see I'm the achievement you can't, so you can't jump? So he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Then oh. he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight oh, of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment, and my wife, and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. Okay. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. <laughs> this is the story of a woman named Mariella. Who? Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, 
for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day, the very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. What? What? <laughs> that was an ending? <coughs> okay, I need to... <coughs> I need to write these down, so... Uh, what did we have? We had four, which was the broom closet ending. Both. And then we had five. Ooh. Which was... Go downstairs and have bad dreams death <laughs> I, I don't mean to laugh just wow <laughs> the Stanley parable very cool game don't forget to like comment subscribe down below do all those cool things first call out at the end of the video is like a good youtuber does but it's your choice if you want to go for it if not that's cool too you were here you watched you had fun love you for that have a great night we'll talk to you very soon <sighs> outro